Hello everybody. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Rob Trendiak. I'm one of the owners of Artel Salon. I myself am not a hairstylist. Uh, it would be a very bad idea to let me do your hair, especially put bleach or something in it. But by trade, I'm actually a filmmaker and a photographer. Combined with my wife Eliza, who is a hairstylist, and we've opened three salons since, we make a, a really great team. Quite regularly, I have people ask me, how do I take better photos? How do I make better videos? How do I do Instagram reels? How do I do anything kind of media related so I do want to create a bunch of videos helping people create better content especially hairstylists because I know how talented they are behind the chair but if just a little tweaking with uh, some content creation could really make a huge difference in their career. So today I actually want to interview one of my all-time favorite people. She's actually an Artel Salon alumni. She used to work at the Fraser Street location and since has opened up her own salon. Um, I would like to introduce you to Bex Pfeiffer. Hi, everybody. I am Bex, and uh, I'm very happy to be here. First of all, thank you, Rob. And yes, I have opened my own salon finally about two and a half years ago. A um, little bit about myself. I have been a stylist for 14 years. I started off in Germany, as you probably heard by my accent. <laughs> and I came to Canada Wow, almost nine years ago now. And yeah, came a long way since. Started off with uh, no English skills to opening my own salon and being a salon owner. Yay. It is honestly like one of the coolest things and your story is one of my favorites. It really shows like how hard you work, but you actually have an amazing career. You've won multiple awards, including the Bank Sal Awards. You've been a finalist in Behind the Chair, which is like a huge platform. You are a Salon Magazine winner. You're a So You Think You Can Color winner and like many, many other kind of hair contests, uh, coloring contests and Instagram contests, print magazine contests. I love that you're a female entrepreneur. You're just, I think, the most badass person, but also at the same time, a really sweet person. I really love that about you. Recently, you've become a Pravana educator and you're also a certified Goldwell colorist, a master colorist. So it's just yes. like, your list is like pretty huge. And I think that's really cool. So that's why I kind of want to introduce you to the world. And I know you have so much to teach and you're, I love how you're willingly open to kind of kind of teach that kind of stuff. So I kind of pulled some magazines that we've shot for. I thought it'd be kind of fun time. So Bex and I did, uh, we can kind of see here, one of these shoots. Um, tell me about uh, this look here. What, what was this, this guy for? <laughs> so this look was for Hair in Motion magazine. And it was actually quite funny. The outcome is amazing, but getting to the actual photo was uh, quite the journey because um, my, mo my model, Kelsey, who is stunning and one of my favorite models to work with, she has very short hair. So for the magazine, I wanted to add another dimension of hair. So I decided to make those earrings with hair extensions and I wasn't really sure where I was going with it when I created them and I used Gorilla Glue and I got glue all over the, <laughs> the earrings and I had to take a ferry to get to your studio, Rob, and I was crying in the car because the earrings didn't turn out at all and I was at Kelsey's house preparing and we were putting acrylic paint on the on the glue to kind of cover it up. It was, um, yeah, quite interesting. And then during the shoot, when we wanted to create motion with the extension earrings, I'm actually standing behind her, throwing those earrings in the air <laughs> for like an hour while you were shooting. Um, yeah, and it, I mean, it took a long time, but I think the outcome was just amazing and all the tears and work we put into this was really worth it in the end. Yeah, and honestly, I think that really speaks to another one of my favorite characteristics of, of you is you figure out how to get it done. There's not like, I can't do this or like, you, you, you I don't know how your imagination works, but it's so like, I would have never have thought of like hair extension earrings, but then 
figuring out how to make it work and you don't quit. And I think, I think that tenacity is something I really admire and uh, why I love working with you. So here's another one. I think this one's hair in motion again. Um, this one's a two page spread though. We can kind of see it here. And we have some, I think we had the wind machine going maybe. Um, yeah, I, again, just super, I can also, super creative, super fun. Your color work is just like so amazing. You see on the bangs there, uh, and then the, just the edge is dyed yellow, the rest is dyed gray. And I know silver and gray is a crazy hard color to achieve. Um, so anyway, that's just a little uh, inside look to Bex's work and some of the work we've done together for some magazines. Uh, but let's dive into social media. Uh, you have a really great social media presence. And one thing I noticed with you is how you're able to get featured on some of the bigger hair pages. I know for myself, even my photography or my salon, we tag people, I, I'll send them DMs, and we don't get featured. Very, you know, we get featured, but like, you get featured on all the big pages. Uh, Aesthetica Magazine, uh, recently, Le Journal Magazine, Salon Magazine. Um, how do you, how do you go about getting featured on these pages? Well, what most people don't know is that I have been tagging and DMing all these hair pages for years. I send them everything. Even if I'm personally not the biggest fan of it, I just keep sending DMs with all photos I ever post, all my work, because sometimes I feel like I'm not the biggest fan of it, but then they think it's amazing. It really started taking off about maybe a couple of years ago. But what most people don't know is I've been sending these photos for like five years okay. all the time. And I sometimes send them twice or three times. <laughs> I'm basically just a stalker who keeps pushing just to get my name out there. And even if they don't repost it right away or it takes a few years, I find if you constantly tag whoever you want to see your posts, if you tag them in there, it just, your name just keeps coming up, you know, and eventually your name will ring a bell. And of course, all the contests, I have entered so many contests and there was so many contests that I entered that I didn't win and didn't make the finals. And that's okay, but you just keep on trying and eventually your name will get out there. And my work is also, getting better, I sometimes go back into my DMs. Let's use Aesthetica Magazine as an example. Sometimes I go back in and scroll through all the DMs I've sent them. And it's really fun to see how I also progressed throughout those years. And just to kind of have a measurement, where was I five years ago compared to where I am now? And then you just keep trying to be better and just yeah just keep on sending those messages that's amazing like definitely a couple keywords popped up into my head uh when you're talking so persistence is one uh uh regular effort towards your goal over a long period of time to me it kind of like reminds me of like a little bit of a bank account accumulating interest you got to start really early and keep doing it. And you're not gonna see success maybe like right away or big returns right away, but you're investing in yourself over a long period of time and regularly, and then creating those relationships. Um, so yeah, they start to see your name multiple times. Um, one thing I don't do is like, so I have DM uh, accounts that I think, I was like, oh, they would like this photo. And then I never hear from them. And then that's that. I've never sent the same one over and over and over and over. Uh, do you find where's the line of being annoying and spammy versus like trying to break through the ice? Ooh, that's a good question. I mean, if you feel like you're getting too much, then you should probably stop. <laughs> I, I mean, it's not like I don't send 10 messages a day. I send maybe two a week or so. 
And when I say I send the same photo, I don't send the same photo in a row. Like I send it to them when I created it. And then maybe half a year later, I repost it anyways. You bring it back I to the top. Because I just didn't have much content that week. So I send it again. I'm not saying like send the same photo 10 times in a row. But, you know, throughout the course, even if a photo is... Um, a few years old, you never know. The photo you just showed, the uh, two page with the hair flow, that just got reposted and we did that 2018, I believe. Right. So you know, know, even three years later, it can still get reposted. <laughs> totally. One thing I don't know too much about with um, not only hair photos, but also just my own photography photos, is when submitting to a magazine or submitting to a contest, uh, you're oftentimes, because I know working with you, like shooting for that magazine, when are you allowed or when should you post it to your public profile? And when should you like keep the photo a secret until it's submitted and accepted? Does that make sense? Yeah, um, that really depends on the competition. Some competitions, you have to send it directly to them. For example, Color Zoom, you're not allowed to publish your photo until they announce the winners or finalists. So it really depends on the competition. There is one shot awards by Behind the Chair. They want you to post it on your Instagram because that's how you enter with a mm. hashtag. So you have to publish it. Gotcha. So I would always say it's really important to read the rules beforehand mm. because you don't want to run into the problem of publishing your own photo when it wasn't allowed because it might disqualify you. Totally. That, that makes a ton of sense. And I think a lot of people probably don't read the fine print. Uh, and so that's super important. Um, yeah, it's also really hard because you get so excited and you want to share it with the world, but then sometimes you have to wait half a year. <laughs> Right. That's really hard. And I know that uh, just being a f photographer, some of the people I work with, like, give me the photo right now or give me the video right now. And it's like, well, like we have to wait. We have to be patient uh, for it to come out at the right time. So that's excellent advice. So thank you. Um, I, so I was just going through your bio and I saw something that I've never seen before. Um, you have two links that says you're a member of the Unicorn Alliance and then a member of Hot on Beauty. What is... Well, what are those pages? Are there other pages like those? And what does being a member entail? Um, so for those two, they're looking for new members usually okay. once a year. So Hot on Beauty, it's called Thousand or Bust. Yep. And then the Unicorn Alliance, formerly known as Unicorn Tribe, mm. they ask for new members so you can send them photos. And if you're lucky, you're part of it. Uh, usually how it goes when you're a member and you go to, let's say there's a big show, a hair show in LA, you would travel there and meet up with other members of, let's say, Unicorn Alliance right. and exchange work. And you have a little group chat where you can also exchange information and hmm. tips, advice, etc. So basically it's just like a little group that you're part of where you can exchange information. Cool. How is this something that's free? Do you pay to be part of this? No, it's completely for free. Okay. You just send a photo in and once a year they choose their favorite stylists mm. to be part of it. Gotcha. Um, I haven't actually met up with anyone because there is no hair show right now, thanks to COVID. <laughs> Same with my Provana team. I haven't had a chance to meet anyone in person yet. Okay. And all the training is on Zoom online right now. So I'm very excited for when this is over and I actually get to meet people that I feel like are my new hair family. Have you ever paid to have something reposted? Because I have seen some, especially in the photography world, some of the really big accounts like, oh, pay us like $40 and we'll feature you. Yeah, there's definitely accounts that want you to pay for it. I haven't done that on Instagram, but I have paid to be in a magazine before. Mm. So you basically, it's the same as having an ad in a magazine. You right. pay for the page. Gotcha. And then you submit your work. 
Awesome. And then, yeah, so, that, that makes perfect sense and how that's how the magazine kind of makes money. And uh, mm -hmm. print media is so different now. They used to have the full market share, but now with Instagram, people are able to see other photos and stuff for free. And advertisers are now on Facebook and Instagram as opposed to in the magazines. But it's just there's something about having it printed that is unlike anything else. I totally agree. Um, I personally want to step away from paying a magazine mm -hmm. to print my work. Um, I don't know. I just find it a little weird. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Totally. Um, however, it is a great exposure. I mean, if you're printed in a hair magazine with your work, there's a pretty high chance that people are going to see it. Yeah. So you're basically advertising for yourself, maybe not necessarily to your own clientele, but within your industry. Totally. And I do think that clients see it, you know, you can show it off in social media. And I think that could build a ton of trust with your clients or your future clients, because being in a magazine is really cool. And whether you pay for it or not, they're going to still think it's really cool. So. I, uh, but at the other the other hand, you have to you know think about um, running a profitable business and making money. So you have to kind of look at your costs that way. When getting featured on some of these pages, whether they're huge pages or just pages with a couple thousand followers, have you noticed a difference from the big pages versus the small pages in terms of getting traction for yourself? Like. If you get featured on a page with like half a million followers, do you get a ton of new followers, or is it like almost more effective to get featured on a smaller page? Uh, what's the difference between that you've noticed between a big page and a small page feature? I personally would say the following that comes with it is almost the same. Okay. When you get featured on a very big hair page that has a huge following, your chances are probably bigger that important people start following you. Mm, okay. However, I think when you are posted in, on a very big hair page, you kind of get lost because they usually post a lot. And um, I find a smaller page it's just as effective and to me personally it brings me just as much joy it doesn't matter to me if it's a small page or a known page or not so known page i find there's always a few followers that come with it and to me everybody who appreciates my work and reposts it i am equally grateful for it that's amazing that sounds awesome have you ever done any like paid advertising through facebook or instagram Yes, absolutely. Um, usually not for my personal account, but for my salon account, because we live in a pretty rural area. So I do promotion posts and then set the promotion out to our ideal clientele here on the Sunshine Coast, just to make sure everybody knows we're there. <laughs> That's amazing. So you uh, specifically only target people on the Sunshine Coast. Yes, awesome. because for me, the promotion posts on Instagram are, for me personally, targeted towards our clientele, people that come into our shop and actually get their hair done. Yep. So I only use advertisement on social media for, for our salon. Nice. And have you found it to be a successful tactic? Yeah, actually, I mean... Yes, I would say it's kind of 50% social media and 50% word of mouth here on the Sunshine Coast. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, a total different tangent. One thing, another thing I love about you is that you did, you moved from a big city, Vancouver, lots of clients, and moved to a very small town. One thing I hear in the photography industry all the time, and I'm assuming it's the same with the hair industry, uh, is excuses of why people aren't busy or successful. And one of the excuses is, I live in a small town, people can't afford the budget, people don't want colorful hair, people don't want this. And I think these are all excuses, but you're like a prime example of moving to a really small town um, and creating crazy hair. I'm sure you do normal hair as well, but you're finding the people who want 
green hair with stars on the side of their of their head and you don't have the, those excuses what's it uh, how have you found it moving to a small town and still finding success well i think people that want crazy hair vivid hair or something that's just a little bit more out there exist everywhere mm -hmm. first of all <laughs> The only thing is that mostly when you are in a small town, those people are used to go to the big city to get these kind of things done. So my job is to make sure that people here know that there is a stylist who is completely capable of doing whatever you want, <laughs> being capable of doing it, because most people think they have to go to a big city to get stuff like that done. But I also maintain my relationship to my city clients. So my city clients actually come out here to get their hair done still. I love that. So that's a different topic, actually, but I still, that's one thing I really, I, I really love and from uh, afar have witnessed uh, from you. So I think those are all my questions, unless you have any other kind of Instagram tips that you do that I don't even know about. Um, is there anything um, you'd like to add? Well, I mean, as you said earlier, I would always encourage people to not get discouraged because mm -hmm. everything takes time and persistence. And when I, if I learned one thing in those 14 years of doing hair or anything in my life, really, whenever I want to reach a goal, it has never, not once, worked out the first time. There's always something that got thrown in my way that I had some obstacle I had to overcome to get there. And that being from owning my own shop, um, becoming a hairdresser, to starting Vivids, to getting permanent resident status in Canada. I was denied the first time actually. Oh, and so I think it's really important to just keep on holding on to your dream and just keep working away on it and don't give up just because it didn't work out the first time. I think that's the perfect way to end the video. I can't, like even as like a life motto, that's just fantastic. Thank you again, Bex, so much. Uh, if anyone has any questions for myself or Bex, please feel free to DM us, follow us on Instagram and YouTube. And we would love to help create more content like this to help you on your journey to finding success. So thank you for checking out this video and uh, I'll see you on the next video. Thank you, Rod. Seriously, Bex, thank you so much.